Hey guys! Well today I'm back in Mach 3 and I'm working on a new screen set for the Precision Matthews. Don't worry, I'm still working on the project. It's just I've had a lot of things going on in the shop. I've been real busy. Uh, we had the holiday weekend and so I just haven't had time to work on the mill itself. I was working on the ball nut mounts and I shot some video of that but I haven't had time to edit that and get it uh, posted but that will come and I also had an incident where I dropped my camera so a lot of the footage that I was going to shoot I couldn't shoot I just didn't have a camera to do it so I had to get that replaced I've been asked several times if I was going to add a power draw bar to the Precision Matthews and yes I am I've also been asked if I was going to add a automatic tool changer and yes I'm my plans are to add a automatic tool changer the biggest hurdle for that is getting a getting the tool changer to work the way that I feel like it should work uh, a lot of the tool changers that I've seen uh, posted on YouTube uh, read about in CNC forums they all seem to limit themselves to using tool numbers 1 through say 16 in the case of uh, Haas's ATC and those tool numbers don't seem to vary what I mean by that is if you have a tool that you've been using say number tool 24 you have it set up in your tool table as tool 24 and you insert it into the ATC you have to rename it 1 through 16 and take something out uh, by doing so you have to change the tool table update it and it just makes to me it's just not the way I wanted to do it so I've been working on the screen set uh, for the Precision Matthews and let me just kind of show you what we've got so the main program screen here is pretty much the same I've just kind of changed the look a little bit to kind of suit my taste uh, and the biggest change you probably see up here is the ATC tab that I've added and this is my automatic tool changer screen um, let's kind of go over it here and uh, you can see what I, I've got uh, going on now this is way f early in the process uh, it's going to be several months before I actually build an automatic tool changer constructing it and fabricating the parts I don't have any problem with I think that's going to be uh, fairly easy for me to do uh, the hard part was getting it to operate the way that I feel like it should and so that's why I'm kind of working on the software side now and if I can get that working correctly uh, proof of concepts then I'm pretty sure I don't have a problem with the rest of the build as I go over this and as you watch this video if you have any suggestions questions uh, please feel free to comment I'm still in the development stage so I'm trying to get input from those of you interested in this kind of uh, tool changer so let's go over the screen here so over here on the right you can see that we have our DROs uh, X Y and Z uh, the BDRO is for the motor that rotates the automatic tool changer I thought about going with a Geneva drive type setup but I just decided that using a stepper motor would probably be the easiest thing for me to do and so on this screen I've added that DRO next we have our reference button and this will reference all to zero in the machine coordinates move them all to the home position if you click on the button it will zero the axis uh, next we have our machine coordinates and our soft limits pretty standard stuff here uh, down at the bottom we ha also have pretty standard stuff we have our reset uh, history clear uh, our media line status 
profile and our M codes and our G codes. Uh, next in the top left here we have our graphic of our rotary tool changer. Uh, there's quite a bit going on right here so let me kind of go over it. Uh, each one of these red numbers represents the slot. And if you want to manually move, rotate this to slot number 2, uh, then all you have to do is just push the number 2. Now each one of these slots, there's 10 slots, and each one represents 36 degrees. So slot 1 would be 0 position, where we are now. And slot 2 is 36. So if I press 2, then you can see that the BDRO moves to 36 and it'll position to slot 2. Also, it updates this DRO right here that says slot number 2 to a, so that you're aware of what slot position the ATC is currently in. 3 is position 72 and again we update the slot number. So that's how you can manually move the ATC if you need to. Uh, next we have the DROs. These represent what tool number is actually in that particular slot. So for slot 3 we have tool number 14. Now you can click up here and you can change this if you'd like. Uh, it's that easy. Next we have our spindle DRO. This is the tool that's actually in the spindle. Uh, let's change that to 3. And then this red delete all button will actually delete all the ATC inventory and change all these DROs to 0. So if you want to wipe out all this data and start a new job then you can just delete all the inventory. Uh, next we have our tray in and our tray out button. Uh, this tool changer, at least in theory, is going to have a pneumatic cylinder that moves it in and out. So this is just buttons to manually move it out and in. Likewise we have a power draw bar on off button and this just allows you to insert or take out a tool from the spindle. When you press this, it will actuate the valve for the power draw bar for three seconds. Uh, pretty four straightforward buttons here. Uh, now, to update the ATC, this button right here allows you to tell what slot you want to go to. So let's type in slot 2. And let's change slot 2's tool number to let's go with 12 so what I want to do is push the update ATC button and we'll see the BDRO change to 36 because we're moving to slot 2 and then we get prompted please insert tool number 12 it gives the description of that tool number so physically, the rotary tool changer is already moved to slot 2. So I insert slot uh, tool number 12 into slot 2. Click OK. And we will see this DRO in slot, slot 2 here change to 12. And it's pretty much that simple. If we want to change uh, slot 9, uh, we want to change that to tool number how about 5? Then we update ATC. You can see the BDRO moving to slot 9, which is around 288 or 3 something. Maybe it's 288. We indicate what slot we're moving to with the slot DRO. Okay, we're at 288. 
So it asked me to put in tool number five, which is a quarter inch four flute end mill. So I insert that tool. This may be kind of redundant, but it kind of lets you double check what's in your tool table and verify that the tool you actually intend to put into the tool changer is actually the tool that Mach 3 thinks is in the tool table. So it's kind of nice to have this feature, at least I thought. So we put the tool in and it updates the DRO for slot number 9. So you can see it's fairly simple. Now let's say we want to change this job completely and we want to delete all of our inventory that's in our tool changer. Uh, you can manually remove all these tools and then go up to delete all and it's going to ask you are you sure you know all tool data will be deleted are you sure um, and right now I'm not sure because I have something else I want to show you but if I click yes all these DROs will zero out okay so next what about when the program's running let's do a tool change so let's do a M6 sorry M6 T 12 okay now what's going to happen is we're going to lower the spindle the z-axis will lower to the tool change position we're going to drop off tool number three into slot one so this BDRO should go to zero then the tools gonna z-axis is going to raise up after it releases the tool we're then going to move the B axis to tool number 12 which is in slot 2 so this should go to 36 it will then drop down pick up the tool and then raise back up to 0 so let's see what happens so our B axis is moving to slot 1 so that it can drop off tool number 3 slot 1 is our home position 0 Our z-axis is now moving down. It dropped off the tool, moved back up, and now the B is moving to slot 2. It went down, grabbed slot tool number 2. It updates the spindle DRO. Also, while all this was going on, the slot number updated as to what position the ATC is currently in. And that's it. Our tool change. Now there's some, a lot of things going on with this um, but that's basically what's happening. So while researching uh, tool change macros uh, to see if anyone has posted anything online I looked for videos, I looked uh, on all the forums I could think of, I searched Google, I searched Bing, and I couldn't find any information on a tool change macro that would allow you to use tool numbers other than the slots that you are using for your tool changer. So I basically had to write this macro from scratch and it's still a work in progress but as you can see it works fairly well uh, once I get the tool changer built which will be seven, several months down the road I will be able to prove, uh, prove the theory but it looks like everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing now we are limited to 99 tools if you try to put in say tool 100 It will say enter a new tool under up to 99 so it will not allow me to put in any number higher than 
99. This number could have been 50 for that matter, but I just chose 99 because it's the highest two-digit number. And it leaves room for flexibility. So I'll type in 12 because slot 2 already has tool 12 in it. And it says, please insert tool 12. And since we were already at slot 2, it automatically asked us to insert, insert that tool. Uh, likewise, if you're running code and you ask for a tool, accidentally your code asks for a tool that's not under 99 or below, it will ask you again to insert a tool. In this case, I'm going to hit 12 again and it's going to exit out the program because 12 is already in there. If you're running code and you don't have your tool changer loaded correctly, uh, this is something that I kind of struggled with because let's say I'm running some G code and I have five tools that I'm using in this code, but I forgot to load the ATC for whatever reason. Um, the tool that I'm asking for is not in there, so let's say 24, because tool 24 is not in the ATC. Then it's going to go to the tool change position, uh, slot number 2 for tool number 12, because that's what's in the spindle. And then it's going to pick that tool up and put it back in slot 2 but then it's going to say that tool number 24 is not available in the ATC uh, so it notifies you and then you click OK and what happens is the program the code that you're running will end and it will automatically rewind I did this because I felt like this was the safest way to get out of the code while uh, if you don't have the ATC running the tool that you need um, but that's pretty much it I the thing that I think is important about this way of doing it is I'm not limited to 16 tools or 10 tools I'm only limited to 99 tools, which I think is going to be more than enough for any home hobbyist and probably a lot of shops. And I think what makes this particular tool change macro different from everything else is the ability to insert a tool number. As long as you have the data stored in your tool table, then it will retrieve that data it will adjust the tool change offset for the height of the new tool and continue running the code. So guys, listen, I really appreciate all your support. Uh, thanks for watching the videos. Please let me know what you think about the proposed ATC screen set as well as the overall theory of operation. If you have any suggestions, comments, or questions please feel free to comment please subscribe to the YouTube channel thumbs up if you like the video thanks for watching and most importantly be safe